So I remember how I felt that night when I pulled into the parking lot of the coffee shop and I parked there and I saw my ex's car right there as well too and I knew that she was in there and this was gonna be the first time we'd seen each other in a while. So I remember actually getting out of the car, walking across the parking lot and my sort of kind of nervous, semi-clammy hand reached out to the door to open it and I pulled the door open. And as I walked in, I saw her, our eyes locked, and then... All right, so this is Clay and I've been telling you the story recently about how I broke up with and got back together with my ex the second time uh, after reading and reliving some of the experiences in my old journal here. You know, we think we remember a lot of the details of our lives, but when you actually go back and read the details of something that happened, you know, many years ago, it's amazing how much really cool stuff that you actually overlook. I'm here to tell you about how to act when you meet up with your ex after it's been a while, whether you've done no contact or it's been a long time or whatever. What I got from my story with my ex is like, okay, we actually had a really great experience. We had a great connection and we ended up wanting to, you know, keep the date going after that coffee meetup. So we went across the street and got some ice cream and, um, you know, ended up kissing and other sorts of stuff later on. The big moral of the story here, there's a couple important things that I want you to keep in mind when you're meeting up with your ex, okay? The first one is actually be prepared for success. You know, uh, we'll get into what success actually means in a little bit, but be prepared for success. You know, so many times people are wondering, what do I do if they're mad at me? What do I do if this doesn't go well? How do I respond if they bring up this? How do I respond if they blame me for that? How do I respond if they start talking on and on and on about their rebound or something like that? And of course, those are valid concerns, but I want you to actually be prepared to have a great time. Be prepared to actually have a positive of interaction. If you're just trying to mitigate and, and plan for the downside, you're going to miss out on opportunities to actually have a positive connection that brings the two of you closer together again. The second thing I want you to keep in mind is assume good intentions here. I know that you're nervous. I know that they're nervous. I, know, I get it. Again, I was there reaching my clammy hand onto the um, aluminum door frame, I think it's aluminum, a door frame of the, of the coffee shop, pulling it open, walking through the door. I was nervous and I'm pretty sure she was nervous as well too, especially given how sort of up and down our, our previous, you know, handful of interactions had been with one another. You know, you're there to connect with them and they're obviously there to, to try to connect with you, right? If they, if they weren't going to be there to honestly connect with you, they probably wouldn't have agreed to meet up with you in the first place. So they're probably there to try to have some sort of experience that you could say has been positive, right? Nobody wants this to go terribly. Nobody wants this to end in some sort of argument or anything like that. So just assume that there are good intentions all around. You probably have good intentions. You may not realize this because of maybe some complex uh, interactions that you've had in the past, but they probably have good intentions as well too. So just keep that in mind as you're interacting and as you're sort of walking into this whole situation. The third thing is that it's okay to be nervous. It's totally fine. I know that there's people on the internet that say, hey, you've got to make it seem like you've got it all together. You've got to make it seem like you uh, you couldn't care less, like you're, you're acting aloof, like you have like better things to do. And it's fine if that stuff is like actually legitimately true about you. It's okay to be nervous. They're probably nervous. It, it's, it's totally fine to be nervous. You don't need to hide this. In fact, if you can just let them know that, hey, I'm a little bit nervous to see you, it's going to help them feel a little bit more relaxed as well, too, because um, they're nervous. You're giving a voice to how they're feeling. It the turns out the two of you are actually feeling the same way. Hey, look at that. We have something in common. Now there's at least a little bit of an emotional connection in place here. Now, it's not like you need to like overcompensate for it and be like, you know, oh, I'm so nervous. My hands are sweating. I don't know what to do. I'm having a panic attack or anything like that. But just let them know, like, hey, it's nice to see you here. Um, it's, it's a little bit weird. And Honestly, I'm a little bit nervous. I hope we can have a good time here today and then just actually talk and just actually uh, bond with one another as possible. But it's totally fine to be nervous. It's totally fine to talk about being nervous because that's probably how they're feeling as well too. And the honesty is going to actually create a lot better of an emotional connection. And it's gonna set the two of you up for being a lot more authentic and straightforward with one another, which I know that's what you want. I know that you know, you're know you not just looking for any kind of connection or any kind of relationship. You want an authentic, genuine connection with, with your ex so that you can have this great, amazing relationship. Uh, the next thing, the fourth thing, is I want you to stay curious about them. I know that there are often a lot of things people think they need to do during a, a first meetup with your ex. 
like, okay, I need to like, you know, make sure I'm not in the friend zone. I need to um, avoid talking about the rebound. I need to talk about how cool my life is and how I've done all this like amazing personal development work or whatever. But if you can just let go of that sort of agenda and just stay curious, just connect with them. Because if this is the first time you've seen each other in a while, they don't really know where you're at and you don't really know where they're at. And in a lot of ways, the two of you are having to rediscover who you are. So just stay curious. Yes, this is someone that you may have been in a relationship with for years and years and years, uh, maybe even decades. But as you're meeting up with them and talking to them again after you know a month, two months, three months, whatever, this is someone who's been through their own journey and their own experience. And if you stay curious with them about what their experience might have been, how they're feeling, what things are like for them, all that sort of stuff, then you're gonna have the ability to connect in a much deeper sort of way and create more of an emotional bond between the two of you. And this emotional bond is of course going to set the two of you up to have better interactions moving forward, whether that's when the, when the two of you meet up again or whatever the case might be. And then the fifth thing I want you to also keep in mind is the point of this isn't to do it all. I know that there's this this urgent need that many people have to try and, you know, get back together as soon as possible. And this causes people to, you know, really stress out about things like, you know, oh, what, what, what do I text my ex to make them want me back? What do I say to them to make them want me back? What do I do to make them want me back? And all that sort of stuff. But if you can just remember, you don't need to do this all in one move. You don't have to go to this meetup and say, okay, by the end of this, we're gonna be back together again. That puts way too much pressure on you. It puts way too much pressure on them. And the truth is the two of you probably didn't break up overnight. There's probably some sort of deep, deeply rooted issues that sort of took some time to develop. And so it's gonna take some time and some effort and consistency to build up the trust to the, two, to the point where the two of you are actually gonna be able to get back together again. So don't think that your main goal and main objective here is to get back together with them. You don't have to do this in one move. Your main goal here is to just move the needle. Just go from, okay, we weren't talking to now we are talking. We weren't connecting on an emotional level to now we were connecting on an emotional level. We didn't have a deep emotional connection to, hey, we just had a positive interaction that brought us closer together and brought us a little bit more authenticity in our, in our dynamic or whatever it might be. But just move the needle from wherever you're at to one step better than where you were uh, before. And that should be a good goal to have for a meetup with your ex for the first time. What has been your first meetup with your ex? Or if you haven't had that yet, what are you concerned about when it comes to meeting up with your ex? Go ahead and leave a comment down below in the comment section. Take care and I'll talk to you next time.